Chapter 12 Nathan Rebukes David Yahweh sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and raised. It grew up together with him and with his children. It ate of his own food, drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was to him like a daughter. A traveler came to the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man who had come to him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man who had come to him. David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, As Yahweh lives, the man who has done this is worthy to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, You are the man. This is what Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that would have been too little, I would have added to you many more such things. Why have you despised the word of Yahweh to do that which is evil in his sight? You have struck Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and have taken his wife to be your wife and have slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. This is what Yahweh says, Behold, I will raise up evil against you out of your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he will lie with your wives in the sight of this son. For you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. David's Loss and Repentance David said to Nathan, I have sinned against Yahweh. Nathan said to David, Yahweh also has put away your sin. You will not die. However, because by this deed you have given great occasion to Yahweh's enemies to blaspheme, the child also who is born to you shall surely die. Nathan departed to his house. Yahweh struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it was very sick. David therefore begged God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night on the earth. The elders of his house arose and stood beside him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. It happened on the seventh day, that the child died. The servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he didn't listen to our voice. How will he then harm himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David perceived that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, Is the child dead? They said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his clothing. 
and he came into the house of Yahweh and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he ate. Then his servants said to him, What is this that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive. But when the child was dead, you rose up and ate bread. He said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who knows whether Yahweh will not be gracious to me, that the child may live. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Solomon's Birth David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in to her, and lay with her. She bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. Yahweh loved him, and he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he named him Jedidiah, for Yahweh's sake. David Captures Rabbah Now Joab fought against Rabbah of the children of Ammon, and took the royal city. Joab sent messengers to David, and said, I have fought against Rabbah. Yes, I have taken the city of waters. Now, therefore, gather the rest of the people together, and encamp against the city, and take it, lest I take the city, and it be called after my name. David gathered all the people together, and went to Rabbah, and fought against it, and took it. He took the crown of their king from off his head, and its weight was a talent of gold, and in it were precious stones, and it was set on David's head. He brought forth the spoil of the city, exceeding much. He brought forth the people who were therein, and put them under saws, and under iron picks, and under axes of iron, and made them pass through the brick kiln. And he did so to all the cities of the children of Ammon. David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Chapter 13 Amnon and Tamer It happened after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a beautiful sister, whose name was Tamer, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Amnon was so troubled that he fell sick because of his sister, Tamer. For she was a virgin, and it seemed hard to Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend, whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. He said to him, Why, son of the king, are you so sad from day to day? Won't you tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamer, my brother Absalom's sister. Jonadab said to him, Lay down on your bed and pretend to be sick. When your father comes to see you, tell him, Please let my sister Tamer come and give me bread to eat and dress the food in my sight, that I may see it and eat it from her hand. So Amnon lay down and faked being sick. When the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let my sister Tamer come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent home to Tamer, saying, Go now to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamer went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down. She took dough and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and baked the cakes. She took the pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. Amnon said, Have all men leave me. Every man went out from him. Amnon said to Tamer, Bring the food into the room, that I may eat from your hand. 
Tamer took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the room to Amnon her brother. When she had brought them near to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come, lie with me, my sister. She answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Don't you do this folly. I, where would I carry my shame? As for you, you will be as one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. However, he would not listen to her voice. But being stronger than she, he forced her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her with exceeding great hatred. For the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. Amnon said to her, Arise, be gone. She said to him, Not so, because this great wrong in sending me away is worse than the other that you did to me. But he would not listen to her. Then he called his servant who ministered to him and said, Put now this woman out from me, and bolt the door after her. She had a garment of various colors on her, for with such robes were the king's daughters who were virgins dressed. Then his servant brought her out, and bolted the door after her. Tamer put ashes on her head, and tore her garment of various colors that was on her. And she laid her hand on her head, and went her way, crying aloud as she went. Absalom, her brother, said to her, Has Amnon, your brother, been with you? But now hold your peace, my sister. He is your brother. Don't take this thing to heart. So Tamer remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very angry. Absalom spoke to Amnon neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamer. Absalom's Revenge on Amnon It happened after two full years that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazer, which is beside Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. Absalom came to the king and said, See now, your servant has sheep shearers. Please let the king and his servants go with your servant. The king said to Absalom, No, my son, let us not all go, lest we be burdensome to you. He pressed him. However, he would not go, but blessed him. Then Absalom said, If not, please let my brother Amnon go with us. The king said to him, why should he go with you? But Absalom pressed him, and he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Absalom commanded his servants, saying, Mark now, when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I tell you, strike Amnon, then kill him. Don't be afraid. Haven't I commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. The servants of Absalom did to Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got up on his mule and fled. It happened, while they were in the way, that the news came to David, saying, Absalom has slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. Then the king arose and tore his garments and lay on the earth and all his servants stood by with their clothes torn. Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother, answered, Don't let my lord suppose that they have killed all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, this has been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamer. Now therefore, don't let my lord the king take the thing to his heart, to think that all the king's sons are dead, for Amnon only is dead. Absalom flees to Geshur.
But Absalom fled. The young man who kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, many people were coming by way of the hillside behind him. Jonadab said to the king, Behold, the king's sons are coming. It is as your servant said. It happened, as soon as he had finished speaking, that, behold, the king's sons came and lifted up their voice and wept. The king also and all his servants wept bitterly. But Absalom fled and went to Talmai, the son of Amihur, king of Geshur. David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur and was there three years. The soul of King David longed to go forth to Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Amnon, since he was dead.